Yo. Honestly, I can't believe you're really doing this. What? What? Catch me up. What's going on? What is he doing? What, why does he look constipated? What's going on? Oh, this is like a political protest. He's boycotting air for Air Max Day. Polit like all air, like <gasps> air. Yeah, and honestly, I think we might lose him. I I feel like he's like on the verge right now. He's he's really ready to die for this thing. Bro, what are you doing, bro? You're turning red in the face, bro. Stop. He's he's a man of his convictions. Bro, this dude is insane, bro. Jesus. That's a full size. That's a full size. She, she, she won every color. That's a full size. Hello to every single member of the FS Army watching across the world. Of course, I'm your co-host, Brendan Dunn. I'm Matt Welty. Dad is in the building. And we have with us today Melody Asani. She is a sneakerhead, a designer, and a woman with some big collaborations on her resume. Oh, Melody gee. Welty, really shy. So happy to have you here. We're going to talk about your sneaker history and all that. But the first thing we want to talk about is the shoes everyone has on feet. So, Welty, what are you wearing? Went back to the basics. This okay. week, after venturing off last week, one block down, X New Balance 1500s. You get them on a trip to Italy. But Italy, Italy, Italy. Italy. That boy, <laughs> <laughs> all right, sir. That boy back. Shout out to my boy, John Geiger. You know, I'm going John Geiger today with, to me, some of the best stone black owned socks in the game. Shout out to all friends, welcome. They did these crazy pair of socks. Um, I love this combination for me. Uh, that's how I'm coming today. I have on some Jordan 11s, um, all black, red sole classics. Love that. Melody, that's a sneaker that you love, but what's your most regrettable sneaker purchase ever? Regrettable sneaker purchase? We yes. all have one. You spent your own hard earn on it. I think I have a pair of dunks, the Pac-Man dunks that I got forever ago. And I, I think I only regretted them because I didn't really have a lot of money back then and I spent my money on them. And I was like, why did I do that? <laughs> just to let you just to let you know, those are worth like a thousand dollars now. Are so they? Maybe, maybe you made a good decision in the investment is well, paying off. I was like the Miss Pac-Man champ. You beat I the game? Oh wow. I did. Well no, but I could beat you. I is that where Cherry's She's giving up. She's giving free smoke out. I'm wearing Reeboks once again today. You know, I, I come back to it every now and then. This is the awake <laughs> pair. Shout out to my friend Lauren for sending these over. Every now and then. Yeah. <laughs> Super slithery snake skin on these. And you know, you know, sometimes. Show ass out of here, man. All right, let's talk sneaker news. The first thing I want to discuss is this leak and rumor. Yeah. I want to stress rumor that Virgil Abloh is doing a bunch more Nike dunks. Some people are saying 20 pairs. Some people are saying 50 pairs. I hope it's not that much. I'm glad they're being prolific with him, but I think they need to show a little bit of restraint. This is a leak. He got upset at another leak. Melody, have you ever had your sneakers leak on the internet? Have you had that feeling? Yes, it's horrible. How especially, is it? It's so painful, especially if it's... A, a photo that doesn't do them justice because you can really photograph sneakers horribly like facts. horribly as we see facts, what facts, happened facts. which which of your pairs hit the internet before you wanted it to or all of them all of them yeah all of them have almost all of them painful did they ever photoshop the shoes and get the colorway wrong that there was like a rumor that your shoes were coming out no but there there were other shoes that looked like mine that they posted that they said were mine but weren't but they had a kind of a similar colorway did you do you just stay quiet in that moment like what do you do i just stay quiet because i'm so i'm a little person so it's like what am i gonna do go up against Go yeah. choke them out. Yeah. <laughs> give, give me a call. I'll get the homies. Yeah, no, I just stay quiet. Like lasagna. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. But has it ever has it ever helped you, though? Like a leak, has it ever helped the sales of a shoe or the release of a shoe? I think hype is always, you know, it, it's like press is press. But I don't personally think it helps just because, you know, I, I imagine it coming out a certain way and being presented like, I want to be the first person to break them or I want somebody, you know, that's a part of my team to break them. For me, it's all about the storytelling. So when somebody does that, it kind of feels like they steal your thunder. Ooh. Next bit of sneaker news. By the time this episode comes out, it will basically be Air Max Day. Nike is celebrating Air Max month as they have been recently. To celebrate pre-Air Max Day, they're trying to do a pre-Air Max Day sneaker 
Pre, meaning Steve Prefontaine. I know Brendan Dunn has a lot of thoughts about this shoe and is very angry, so I'm just going to give him the floor and let him rant. You angry? <laughs> Listen, as a man cast in the image of Steve Prefontaine, this doesn't feel like Steve Prefontaine to me. I don't know what he has to do with Air Max, God rest his soul. M Melody, are you a big Air Max fan? I do love Air Maxes. Are you celebrating Air Max Day, Air Max Month? Sure. <laughs> I'm not convinced. <laughs> I love that. That's not Kevin Durant. It doesn't sound like you're throwing said, an Air Max yeah. party based off of yeah. that. I got shoelaces. I got shoelaces. Uh, yeah, I got. I have Air Maxes. Why not? What's your favorite Air Max sneaker of all the time? I think the '95s. Neons. Yep, they take me back to a certain era. Oh. It's like when my boyfriend worked at Foot Locker. It was a special time. Was he wow. getting you the discount? Uh, the five finger discount? Yes. <laughs> so really, you were stealing for Foot Locker? <laughs> well, I wasn't technically. Right. But, but he I was. Mean, I mean, I worked in the mall. We were mall rats. Everybody was kind of boosting something out of somewhere. I love that. Free orange or Julius for the whole team. <laughs> yes. I will say one positive thing about the Air Max. It is a nice colorway. I would never pay my own hard-earned American for it, but it's a nice colorway. I do like that so seafoam green. It's cool. They made the whole thing out of recycled materials. That's kind of cool. Yes. Yes, I'll give it that too. I, I'm man. surprised that poster sold you off top, Mr. Man. <laughs> Anyways, not for me. You, you don't want to be Captain Planet today, I see. Melody, you you talked about boosting sneakers, but have you ever resold sneakers? No, I haven't. I kind of missed that boat. I was um, when I was younger, I, that wasn't really a thing. And then by the time kids started reselling sneakers, I was kind of too old. Pac-Man. And I usually just like giving them away. So I'll give them to somebody that I know will want them. I'd rather do that than sell them. All right. You guys yeah. seem so disappointed by this. <laughs> it's like crickets. <laughs> no, that's exactly the bit. Oh, okay, that's what it is. Okay. That's what it is. That's Don't worry. <laughs> okay, I see it. I see how you guys you are see, gonna- You see the vibe. I see. So Melody, you know, let's uh, let's get down to it. What are your first sneaker memories? We know about you know you doing different things back in the day, but like, what really triggers it for you? Well, when I grew up, we couldn't. My mom would never really spend money on shoes for me, so it was very aspirational. I think my first pair of sneakers were from Payless, and they were Pro, Pro Wings. Pro Wings, yeah. yeah. Pro Velcro. Yep, I had Pro Wings. I really, I remember I really wanted Keds. It was like the cool girl sneaker. I really right. wanted the 5411s, but I mm -hmm. couldn't get them. Mm -hmm. right. But I think my first pair of shoes that were like sneaker sneakers were when I started playing basketball and I got the Grant Hill Filas. And you couldn't touch me. Like, <laughs> I just thought I was the freshest kid in school. Walking around like Tupac. Yeah, exactly. I remember I went to, um, back then vintage shopping was really popular. Everybody would go to Melrose and I found a pair of um, ones in um, some vintage shop and they were kids, but they fit me. They were like the patent leather OG and I still have them to this day. They had the number inside. Wow. That was like my, my like prized possession. I was into Air Maxes, sure. That was kind of high school for me. The 11s, which again, I couldn't really afford. It was like Space Jam, 9s. Foot Locker um, discount? Yeah. <laughs> Five finger. I mean, I kind of went through a little bit of everything. I remember when Pumas were big. Pumas. I think I was like 13 or 14 and I got a pair of those and I put the fat laces on them. Yeah. Cortezes were huge. I mean, I'm from LA, so everybody. everybody Junior high school, right? Everybody Cortezes. with the Cortezes on. Yep. Big in yep. Sherman Oaks. Yeah, for sure. 818. Oh. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> were you big into dunks when those were really hot in the early 2000s? I was. Nice. Were you lining up? I wasn't lining up, but I, I've never lined up. I was never okay. really lining up. I always had a friend. I'm Didn't Persian. Have to. Yeah. Had a plug. Always, always had something. Yeah. Everybody a, got five eight. A situation. Yeah. Limited situations, but you could always make a different situation. Obviously, eventually you started making your own shoes, and I know you were living yeah. out in Guangzhou for a while. Were you going to sneaker factories at all during that time? Because obviously that's a big hub for that sort of production. No, I wasn't going to sneaker factories, but I did have, I did try to make one sneaker one time, and mm -hmm. it came out horribly. It was like, 
It was this, uh, the only factory that I could find, and they were ma making like knockoff Margiela sneakers. Mm. <laughs> so I had to use the existing last, and it just didn't, it wasn't good. So I, I didn't pursue it. You were making shoes and heels and things like that, right? And yeah. customs held them for ransom for $20,000 or something yeah. like that? Custom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was crazy. First of all, L uh, U.S. Cut Customs is a setup. Like, I just really feel like they're a business, but um, I didn't really know too much about it. I had a huge shipment coming in, and they said that I used fake YKK zippers on the shoes. <laughs> and so we like went to YKK, we got the receipt, we showed them the evidence, they wouldn't drop yeah. the case. They wanted like $30,000 just for me to go fight the case. And if I lost it, I would have to pay the 30 and their fees or something crazy like that. So you told so them to keep I, the shoes. Yeah. Dang. That's crazy. What a story. Melody, in 2012, you end up getting a Reebok collaboration. There was a woman there who loved your jewelry, wanted you to do shoes. You have a crazy story about you tried to release the sneakers in your own shop and you only had 50 pairs and you sold like 3,000 overnight and mm -hmm. had a bunch of angry shoppers uh, the next so, day. Yeah, well, we didn't have a shop back then. So we released everything online and I Ooh. had the jankiest website and our <laughs> website didn't have a counter, like an inventory counter. And we were, we were making things like, I was making mostly jewelry, so it was made to order. And then the other stuff that I had on there, we weren't getting a ton of orders, so I didn't have to worry about something selling out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so we put the shoes up there on a Friday and I was like, I hope we sell these. 50 pairs like I've never had 50 of anything so I, we just put it up over the weekend and then we got back to work on Monday and we had like 3,000 shoes sold so I called up Reebok in the morning and I was like uh how many of those did you guys say you had <laughs> <laughs> wow. um, need a bigger boat no it's just funny because nowadays that happens with like with Nike but Nike will give the kids like 15 percent off their next purchase if they oversell on a you know on a sneaker drop but that happened to you before all of that, you know? Yeah, no, it was crazy. But what was really cool was I think I, I was able to get like 1500 pairs and then the other 1500 people had to wait like a month or a month and a half before they were able to get them and they all waited. Wow. That was the crazy part. I was just like, every day I'd wake up with anxiety, like they're gonna cancel them and I bought them and nobody canceled, it was crazy. You ended up doing a question with Reebok and you got to meet Allen Iverson. Do you remember what he said about the sneakers you designed? He loved them. I mean, he just said that he really fucked with them and liked them. But I think what was cool about that was I really wanted to highlight his wife just because I felt like she held him down so hard. Crazy. All those years, like so Crazy. Hard. It's crazy because he only has one son and three daughters. And so I went out um, to where they were in North Carolina and I did a whole shoot with them and had them model the shoes. And my favorite part was meeting his youngest daughter her name is Dream, and she is literally the next Allen Iverson. Like she, she was, she can hoop like crazy. She was only 12 when I met her, but she had the gift. Like a hundred percent had the gift. She was out there with a rock, like an actual literal rock, like <laughs> doing her little, it was crazy. So Melody, I want to ask you, you know, the way that you speak about a lot of things in your life when it comes to sneakers, you know, you speak from a, a humble place. It's almost like when things happen, like you're surprised because you come from the era where like nobody around us ever gets a shoe. Boom, we ran through Reebok and then boom, you jumped to Jordan brand. You know, you did two shoes. They go for a lot of money now. Are you surprised still of the success that comes with the shoes that you do? No. Okay. <laughs> Not humble anymore. Let's go. <laughs> there it is. But let me tell you why. I think it's just because um, there aren't enough there aren't enough products like that out there for women. That's the only reason why. I think that uh, storytelling is such a big part of sneakers and why people collect them and why they want them. And it just doesn't feel like the same amount of time and effort is put into the storytelling and the thought for the design behind a woman's shoe. How big was that moment for you getting your own Jordan? Huge. Are you kidding me? It was like the fulfillment of, I mean, it's still, it's still crazy to me. Didn't you help Questlove design a pair of Nikes too quietly at one point? Can you tell me about I that? I did. <laughs> 
That boy doing his homework. I know. Well, this was way before I didn't even have the Reeboks yet. We're, we're friends. We've been friends for a long time. He was actually one of the first people that really believed in me. I think Nike had him participate in some competition where he had to design a shoe. So he flew me out to New York and made me go with him to help him design the shoe. And it was like a game show kind of thing. Like we were all in some, we were, I forgot what sneaker store we were in. Maybe some, 21 Mercer. Like, yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's what yeah. it was sneaker history right there you, you, you yeah. like trinidad said you have a couple pairs of jordans you, you got the second one pretty quick i've been trying to convince a couple iranian women in my life to get a pair for themselves uh, so hopefully they can sort that out but how did you get yeah. the second sneaker right away um it was part of the package so i was working on it from from jump like when i first ah, okay when i first went from in jump, it's like two sh yeah from jump man <laughs> Oh man. God! She entertained that shit. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> uh, drown me now. So you knew you knew the whole time. I mean, time he's got a nice gonna... voice. He's got like a nice bassy voice. I was kind of like lulled into it. Yeah. Well, exactly. there it is. Like, now we can't. Now you can't tell him nothing different. Fuck oh, exactly. oh God! <laughs> That's it. Put it on the resume. <laughs> Melody, I just want to say congrats on your new role of creative director of women's at Foot Locker. Thank you. Uh, we can say that we both worked at the same place. Um, me working at Foot Locker <laughs> as well. You in a much slightly different role. levels. Slightly you, different yeah, levels. Yeah. You, 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 you Listen, in a much, gr much greater role, but it was a big deal to get a job at Foot Locker when you were young. Like you had to have shoe experience, right? Was that like that in your mall? Yeah. Because I didn't have shoe experience. And they knew yeah, you might have been stealing them. But it's possible. Yeah, I had, to, I, had to work, I had to work at Dick's Sporting Goods before I could get a job at Foot Locker. So yeah, it's exactly see? like wow. you, had to, you had to work your way up. But how did that deal happen with Foot Locker for you, for your new role? Well, you obviously great. have shoe experience, so. Yeah, I have shoe experience. You sure? Are you sure now? Got me in. <laughs> Jesus. So they had a couple people in there that were, you know, working on growing that side of the business and they were looking for a creative director. Well, they weren't looking for one. They just basically created the role and they approached me about it. So over the course of the last year, um, it took us almost a year to negotiate the contract and then it happened, which I was really happy about. So now you guys are basically coworkers. Yeah. Are you working that on that like ex exclusive Lee, now are you jug still juggling a million different things in your life? Yeah, no, I'm still doing other things. I mean, I still run my own company and um, I still do all the collaborations that I do. So there is obviously a lot of overlap. So I'm hoping that down the line, maybe next year, there could be some more like synergy between it all. But right now, yeah, I'm still just juggling it all. A person like you being in that role it's different than just any woman being in that room because you actually come from this shit. I don't know if you can speak about it yet, but I would like to know what are some things that you think that like out the gate, I got to do this for women. You know what? There isn't any one. It's so big, right? It's such a big thing because in a lot of ways, it's very trailblazery where they've, they've literally never done this before. But out the gate, I think it's really important to me to just democratize cool product because Foot Lockers exist in a lot of the neighborhoods that we grew up in. The entire reason why I've kept the price points I've kept with my own brand were because I wanted girls like me growing up to be able to afford it. So it's cool when, you know, Beyonce wears it, but I'm, I'm really making it for the girls that are like me because of the creation of all these like top tier sneaker stores now and the, and the way that these companies tier things out, oftentimes, the the mall essentially or people that still shop at the mall get the hind tit as my husband would call it <laughs> <laughs> so I, I just really want to democratize cool product and then also bring in a lot of other women because oftentimes people are like oh she's the only one and it's not true it's just that i think i've been in it the longest and i have a lot of experience but there's so many other women out there that are so dope in this field that just need a chance facts any chance you will hire wealthy back to Foot Locker? <laughs> I don't know, Matt. I don't know. Oh, wow. <laughs> he has like, shoe experience. No, I don't know if I trust him. Oh, I mean, look at him. Like, oh, my God. <laughs> oh, this is sick. By the way, Melody, every single week here on the show, we punish someone in the worst take section for something terrible they did or said last week, as decided by the YouTube commenters. We make them switch out their shoes for something awful. This week it is Matt Scheiss. Mr. Untrustful himself, Matt Welty. <laughs> People were upset that he wore Jordans. I say let the man live, but Welty, you gotta you gotta take your shoes off and, and put something terrible on, so I'm sorry. 
I got these. How do they what smell? Are those? They these smell like a like a sharpie. I feel like I just lost. What are they? Hold on to your brain cells. Put them on your feet. Tell us in the comments yes. who deserves that distinction this week, and we will punish them next week. Put them <sighs> on your feet. Also do <laughs> <laughs> he put them on the ground. He didn't put them on his feet. Put them on your terrible feet. Terrible guy. Melody, we also do a segment on the show uh, called Drip, Flip, or Skip. Drip meaning that it looks good. Flip meaning that you resell. And skip meaning that you don't rock with it at all. The first shoe in Drip Flipper Skip is gonna be the Nike Air Max 90 Bacon. Legendary shoe. Melody, I'll start with you. Is this a drip? Is this a flip? Or is this a skip? Flip. What? Okay. Flip what would you resell locker? this for? What, what's, what do you think the reset would be on this? You know what? I don't even know. Okay. <laughs> I just wonder, I just wonder, I mean, shit, you are the creative director of the world now. Flip what color right. are the laces? The pinkish colorway. I think they come up multiple. The though. same pink as the check? Yeah. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, I She's would thinking skip. Skip. I think I'm I'm gonna re retract and skip. I think that these are great. Uh, loved having Dave Ortiz on the Complex Sneakers podcast to talk about this legendary shoe. Happy it's coming back. Never got it back then. Drip. Okay. I've been waiting for this one for a long time. I can smell it from here. You might you might see me posing for a wild bodega photo eating some turkey <laughs> bacon with these on my feet. It, we might have to set that up. It's a trip. Y'all are sick. Yeah, it's a skip for me. I'm cool. Um, really? I mean, this is the type of things that I get worse take for, but it doesn't matter to me because I didn't want it back then and I don't want it now. I want it, I'd rather uh. leave it for somebody who needs it. No, Air Max 90s is not my thing. Now, if it was an Air Max 1, appreciate your honesty. Air Max 95, 96, 97, holler at me. Uh, moving forward, shoot number two. I'm on my year. Air Jordan 3, James Whitner, love that guy so much. Brendan Dunn, I'll start with you. Trip flip or skip, sir? I'm on my year. I'm uh, gonna get these. Yeah, this is a drip. I like the sneaker a lot. I despise really cool. you so much. I wouldn't wear them, but I think that they're a drip. We don't want to upset Michael Jordan. Yeah. <laughs> no, is he okay. they're, they're a woman's Jordan, by the way. It's a drip. Woo! Jesus. Uh, moving forward in the shoes, we have the Easy Foam Runner Moon Gray. Melody, how are you about Yeezy shoes? How do you feel about this one? Or is Yeezy shoes, period? Um... God, you know what? I don't own any. <gasps> not none, yeah. ain't nothing. No. Nope. Why not? You just not a fan. Christ. I don't think I'm a fan. Okay. Mm. It kind of looks like a space biscuit to me. <laughs> okay. Is that a drug? So I'm sure people are gonna hate me, but um, I don't know. I, I I don't like them. I've seen some some people rock them, and I'm like, wow, that's really dope. I just don't think I would. Not for me. It's a skip for me. Okay, okay. Well, to you an Adidas guy, talk to me. Drip for skip. She's pulling out something. I have the only foam runners I need right here, the Autorots. I wish they had kept with the Armenian theme on this one, <laughs> on the new one. Maybe call it the Tigran, I don't know. But if it was that... <laughs> I it, knew it, we were it, going to it. Armenia. <laughs> yeah, we're going to Armenia with this one. This That one doesn't go to highest sound, so it's a skip. <laughs> Woo! I, I love this sneaker. I could wax rhapsodic about it for so long. I mean, you, you put it on your feet and you're breaking necks. You, you, you wear it with no socks and you're, you're standing on the beach letting the ocean water run through your nude toes. It's, it's, it's a feeling and it's a drip. <laughs> nice. What's it called? Um, I feel kind of crazy, um, but the Jordan 3s are a drip. I feel like I didn't say that, but I'm on my ears. The whole <laughs> drip. Like I'm, I'm looking at this shoe and this is a skip. I love Ye, but this is a okay. skip. I want the colorway that Welty has though. I, I so it's really surprising me that I don't have this shoe and you don't see him. I've went to a lot of sneaker stores in the last month and you don't see that in the resale shop. Like you don't see it. So like somebody sell me the goddamn shoe. Now we also do outfits on this segment and I don't think there's any better outfits to do in the entire world than Melody and Sonny outfits. Outfit number <laughs> one. <laughs> wow. Mm -hmm. There she is. Uh, talk to me. This is this is Slauson, right? Yep. Well, this was actually a project I did with this artist, Hassan Hajaj, 
And he's this incredible photographer out of Morocco. They call him the Moroccan Andy Warhol. And he did this whole series um, with Moroccan girls and motorbikes. It was like really big. All these museums bought it all over the world. He's incredible. And then he wanted to do a series with me and uh, the girls that I worked in my shop with lowrider bikes because it was very LA. So we did this for a Reebok campaign. Nice. So I must ask, Melody, is this a drip? Is this a flip? Is this a skip? Looking back at this picture. Ooh. Um, a skip. Really? Okay. Skipping your own outfit. Yeah, I'm skipping my own outfit. You know what? The only thing I like are the pants. They're these horse riding pants Ralph Lauren made forever ago, which I still own. You know, it's so hard looking back on yourself. I, I think I'm too close to it. I'll leave it to you guys to judge. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We had Lala Anthony on the show last week, and she told us that sneaker wedges were the wave that came crashing down. I have to abide by Lala on her taste level on that, so I'm gonna have That's to skip true. Unfortunately, Melody. That's okay. true. I love the tie-in that you mentioned. Shout out to the whole Maghreb in North Africa, but I, I I don't love the sneaker wedges either, even even though I do love the Reebok collab, so I'm gonna skip it as well. Well, I'm different than y'all. I'm different. That, that picture is dope to me, that outfit, and it's a dope moment, like hearing the story behind it, like the art. I'm gonna say drip. Okay, and I, I feel like Trinidad, you're the only rapper that could pull off a pair of sneaker wedges somehow, some way. Well, you know, <laughs> we I need to see things, that. I, I make things. I make things work. <laughs> Moving forward, boom. Serena times this is something. Talk to me. Who decided to go jail pose first? <laughs> <laughs> I think she did. She's so dope. Of course. Okay. I was like literally just staring at her ass the whole time. I felt like such a pervert. I mean, I can't concentrate on anything else. She's so dope. Uh, we're at my store. Um, Serena was actually launching her clothing line and she asked me if she could come do it with me at my shop. Nice. I mean, I gotta ask, drip, flip, or skip? Drip. This is a drip. It does hurt my heart a little bit because you have the blue Union Jordan ones on and I actually missed a chance, passed up on a chance to buy those, so it, it still hurts a little yeah. bit. By the way, Melody, what are we calling this album? Because this looks like an album cover to me. Right? I'm gonna need a moment. Come back to me on that. <laughs> We're coming Shirley back to you. And, Shirley and Serena. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Melody, do you know what they call a group of goats? No. A tribe? A tribe called Mel? No, a tribe. <laughs> We're just the tribe. We're working yeah, this on is it. A We're this is, this, is a, this, is a, this is a tribe of goats right here, so obvious trip. Wonderful. I mean, this is a drip. Come on. I, I feel it's so crazy, um, Brenda, you brought up those Union ones. I gave away one pair, the, the black and red, to a homie. But for some reason, I can't find my blue ones. I, I lost them or something. I'm, I'm sad. Mm, actually. Wonder. Uh, but this is a drip. This is a drip. These two people in the picture, I'm, going, I'm biased. All right, I'm a simple man. Drip. Last but not least, talk to me. <laughs> talk to me. <laughs> Uh, I think the well, Celtics the jersey in the back sells the whole picture. <laughs> like, oh, oh God. <laughs> it's so tragic because green is my favorite color. My husband's got on the ones. He was actually the first person to own them. He wore them to our wedding, which was crazy. Nobody had seen them yet. And Amazing. I got married a week before they released. So that was really cool. So they have a lot of sentimental value for me for that reason. And nice. then I also put my best friend's quote around the shoe, which is, if you knew what you had was rare, you would never waste it. So that's a... That's a Definite oh. drip for me. And then the Swarovski Air Maxes, I mean. Even though I really wanted the silver ones, but I love the gold ones. I respect that. Who has a better yeah. shoe collection, you or your husband? Me, definitely. We First of all- sneakers like that? <laughs> I was just asking, I don't know, he could surprise us. He does, but he's not a sneaker head at all. Like he doesn't mm -hmm. keep the boxes. Like I'll buy him shoes and then I'll see the boxes in the trash. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, what are you doing? And he's like, oh, it's, you know, he's like, it's just takes up too much space. Why are you keeping this shit? And I, and I like keep everything meticulously. Like I'm such a packaging whore. He wears them into the ground. He gives them away. Oh my God. Our cleaning lady has gotten so many grails. <laughs> she's she's coming through with size 12s once a week. He, it, it like comes and goes for him. I see Flea. I'm transported to him licking LSD off of Johnny Depp's flannel <laughs> shirt in Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. I didn't know we were going there, but let's go. Well, we, we're here now. <laughs> epic Come scene. On. Epic scene. Amazing. <laughs> one, of the, one of my favorite cameos in, in uh, movie history. And the story you told about him wearing your sneakers to the wedding is amazing. Drip. 
I knew I'd get you guys with that one. <laughs> that, that's got to be one of the best sneaker rollouts of all time, having your husband wear your sneakers to your wedding. I love that. You know, it, it makes me emotional. You know, nothing like having an Iranian woman by your side. So this is a drip. This guy. Oh, this is a drip. Let me just say, this is a drip. I'm here for it. I'm always going to be here for couples and kids. Melody, by the way, before we get out of here, we want to breeze through the comment section real quick and see what people have been saying about us on YouTube for the past week, which is always a fun time. We We have one from Marcus Hiley saying, I got bad back pain for a week now and I rewatched every Ouch. episode. The best way to take it off your mind. Um, I, I guess that works. It's, it's actually relatable too because I get back pain every time we do one of these shoots. So I hear you, Marcus. <laughs> we have Billionaire Boy 1994 saying, This is the best show and I can't wait for it to be back in the studio. Um, we're working on that. If you can set me up with a vaccine, maybe we can make it happen. But otherwise, I don't know. We have Fung CF saying, Yo, I'm from Malaysia and I've been supporting y'all since the jump. Started out in law school watching Full Size Run and now I'm graduating in a month's time. Hope y'all be here until I retire or something. Thank you for watching from Malaysia. We hope you will be there to bail us out of jail when Wealthy and I show back up in Malaysia. Trinidad, you can come too. Thank you for watching. This has been another episode of Full Size Run. I am your co-host, Brendan Dunn. I'm Matt Wealthy. James. Melody Asani. She, she, she won every color. That's a full size. Buy six for my kids. Bought a seven for my chick. Guys, have you realized that we still don't have a million subscribers? It's ridiculous. Let's talk about it. FS Army, everybody that watches this show, get us a million followers. What are we waiting for? Make us go platinum. And after you subscribe to the channel, make sure you download the Soul Collector app. That's important too. Go buy sneakers. Please. Platinum, 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 platinum.